Tony here and today I'm going to show you how to play these classic GameCube Wii and even N64 games in full 3D virtual reality. So I'm talking about full 360 virtual reality like you would play any other VR game. Now I'm using an Oculus Quest connected to my PC via link cable but you can use other headsets like HTC Vive, Oculus Rift S, as long as they're connected to the PC this can work. Remember to check out my channel for more content like this, hit that subscribe button and notification bell to be kept up to date with everything and to help keep this channel going. There will be timestamps in the description below in case you want to skip to a particular part. So let's take a look. So first we download the latest version of the emulator. There's a link in the description below for this website. And once you install it, you'll get something like this. Now I've already got my ROMs there. You just click refresh to bring up the ROMs. And here I am playing Super Smash Brothers for the GameCube. Uh, in full 360 virtual reality. Now you can see there's this big black void behind me. Obviously it's not meant to be played this way, but it runs perfectly fine. You know, minimal slowdown and entirely playable. Uh, here we have Borders Gate Dark Alliance. This had a bit more slowdown. I fiddled with the settings, got it running uh, a bit smoother, but again, still very playable. And this is really cool. It's like looking top down from a board game in virtual reality. Um, yeah, really enjoyable and definitely one to check out. Crazy Taxi worked fine, again minimal slowdown and if you do get nauseous in virtual reality this might not be the one for you but if you do enjoy Crazy Taxi uh, a lot of fun in virtual reality. Um, Torok Evolution run almost perfectly, I didn't notice really any slowdown or graphical glitches or anything like that so this one um, definitely was running very well but I have to say my standout game was Metroid. Prime. Now this ran really well and it was awesome to be able to play this in virtual reality. Such a good game and in virtual reality just wow, definitely a, a must play. Now this is the GameCube version of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The, the game ran fine, there were some cutscenes that looked weird because of the fact I'm playing in virtual reality but for all purposes the game was running fine. And even Star Fox, uh, this is the N64 sort of crack version. So an N64 ROM that's been cracked to work on GameCube. I will leave a link in the description below because there's a way you can do it. It's a bit fiddly, I've never done it myself. This was pre-cracked if you like, but it runs just fine. And Duke Nukem 64 ran well too. The only thing was you could see the different sprites and enemies through the walls, which kind of made it unplayable. But it's really cool still to see Duke Nukem 3D in full VR. Now I'm going to show you the settings I have for this Dolphin emulator. Now, I just go on to say that I'm not an expert in emulation, so these were just the settings I used to run the games you've just seen, and it seemed to run many of them quite well. Now if you're using an Oculus device, go to your Oculus application on the PC, go to settings, general, and turn on unknown sources. And here's a website which I'll link in the description below that will help explain some of these settings and whether you want to turn them on or not. So now I'll walk you through a few details. If you go to that folder there, that's where your ROMs are located. So just select your ROMs folder. If you click refresh, once you've added a ROM to that folder, you click refresh and the game appears in that interface. You want to so make sure enable dual core and enable idle skipping are both selected. In most cases, you want those enable cheats. Then you can also speed up the game a little bit if it's going a bit slow, but it does speed up the sound as well. And make sure JIT Recompiler is the one selected. In most cases, that's gonna be the one you want. Skip past interface and onto audio. Select DSP HLE and X Audio 2 if using Windows. Now paths is where your ROMs are stored. If you go into advanced, you can enable CPU clock override. Now if your frame rate is dropping, I have heard for some ROMs, for example, like Spyro the Dragon, you can clock this to 250% and it will take it from about 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second. So if you're experiencing issues, you can play around with that to see if it helps. If you look at the back end, you can go OpenGL or Direct3D. Some games will work better on one or the other. If you go Direct3D, you have to select your graphics card. I just select Auto for this one. I leave VSync off. Also make sure that Use Full Screen is ticked. I think that helps prevent latency. Um, and I make sure show FPS frames per second is also ticked to help me identify any frame drops during the game. Now we go to enhancements and these three options internal resolution, anti 
aliasing and angioscopic filtering can really have an effect on performance. So if you're having performance issues, start from maybe the lowest one of each of these and work your way up because these can cause slowdown. But bear in mind, having them on the lowest setting can also cause graphical issues. So you're gonna have to play around with it, see which works best for the game. Go to stereoscopic 3D mode. I'm using uh, Oculus Quest via link cable. I select Oculus and we have separation and convergence sliders here which control the distance of objects and virtual cameras. Skip EFB access provides a speed boost, so if your game is going a bit slow, you might want to keep this one on, but it does this at the cost of emulation accuracy. So I'm just gonna tick this one off, but if your game is going a bit slow, you might want to leave it on. Now ignore format changes, provides a small speed boost apparently. Now looking at EFB copies, I'll leave that on texture. For some games, you need to disable this, but for others, you can leave that on. If you go to the Dolphin settings website that I have linked below, it will tell you which games you will need to disable this for. Now if you go to text to cache, slide it to the far right. This will make a big difference in terms of speed. So to make it fast, although this could cause some um, graphical anomalies and make sure fast depth calculation is also ticked. Fast depth calculation can give you a small boost in speed but can cause flickering textures. Next, we can go to the controllers and you can just configure your controller, choose your controller type, click configure and then you configure it button by button. You can also try connect a Wii controller via Bluetooth if you have one. There is also a VR tab and I'll just highlight the VR game settings you can control the camera and we've also got a motion sickness tab with some options there if you do get motion sickness and a VR instructions tab to help you with configuring this for VR. Now if you right click on the game you can also access the individual properties and enable different properties for that particular game as each game might run better or worse depending on what options you select. We also have the VR camera controls there and make sure you tick these two boxes here as it removes these ugly bars you can see in the right hand screen of my video. Now if you want to know more about what settings you should enable or disable when playing a particular game, right click, select the wiki and you can see here a breakdown of some of the settings you need to turn off and on to get the best performance. There is an active Google spreadsheet which I'll link in the description below which shows what games people have tested in VR, how well they've worked and what settings they've used. So if you're wondering what games have worked and what haven't, that spreadsheet is a great place to start and add to it as you find more. Now this seems like a lot and to be fair, there is a bit of setup involved, but this video really doesn't do justice to how good it is to play these classic retro games, games I played for hours on end in my childhood in full virtual reality. It's such a mind-blowing experience and well worth the time investment. Now, that's about it from me. I'll leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.